Hey all you captains of conditionals, this is Prof G, and in this lesson we'll cover more Boolean logic goodness as we introduce two more ways of evaluating conditions in Swift, the switch case statement, and the ternary operator. Ready to learn? Giddy up! So at the end of our last lesson we learned about if statements, and we set our single button to toggle the string for our text view between two values, you are awesome, and you are great. And while learning about if, we created a playground that we named conditional playground. Now I still have this open in Xcode, so I'm gonna press Command Accent Character to switch to the Playground window, which I've still got up behind this project. If you don't have Conditional Playground open, then find that file and open it up. And I'm gonna clean up some of the stuff that I don't think is really useful for our Conditional Playground notes. I'm gonna delete the I am a developer string and the three lines where we learned about constants versus variables. And then I'm gonna highlight this entire if else clause and the person variable declaration above it. And I'm gonna press Command Slash to comment it out. And now I'm gonna write a switch case statement that mimics this exact same functionality. So I'll start by creating a variable person just like I did before, and I'll initialize that to Lamore. And we could also use a constant here since we're not changing the value during the execution of our program. But here's how switch case works. First, we write the switch keyword followed by the value that we're evaluating. Now we wanna look at the data inside of the value person, so we'll write switch person and open and close curlies. And then inside the curlies, we add a single case for each condition that we want to respond to. So if I say case and then the string Lamore and always follow a case with a colon, I'm saying in the case where the value person equals the string Lamore and below the colon, I can put any statements that I want to execute if this case is true. And I could write those statements down, but instead I'm going to write all of my cases first, then I'll go back and fill in what to do for each case. So I'll enter case, then the string grace colon, case, then the string Beyonce colon, and when using switch case, instead of using else as a condition, we use default colon. And switch case is different from if statements because we can write an if statement without an else statement, but switch case statements always have to be exhaustive. So since it's possible for us to put a value in person, which is different from the three cases that we have, Lamore, Grace, and Beyonce, then we need a default case. So default is what we execute if none of the other cases is true. And now let's put in the lines to execute if a given case is true. So underneath Lamore, that's print, hello, Lady Ada. For Grace, that's print, hello, Admiral Hopper. For Beyonce, that's print, all hail Queen Bee. And for everyone else, the default case is print, hello there, string interp. And in between the parentheses of the string interp, we put the person value. And we can try this out with a shift return on the last line. With person equal Lamore, we get hello, Lady Ada. If we change person to Grace, we get hello, Admiral Hopper. And just to test the default case, set person to Prof G, and we get hello, Prof G. Nice. Now note that switch case evaluates all cases starting from the top. And as soon as a single case is satisfied, I'll skip any remaining cases and continue to execute code beyond the statement. And there's a lot more to switch case statements than we've covered, but now at least you know this conditional statement exists and you know how to use it in its most basic form. So now let's comment out the switch case statement and the person variable above so we can learn the ternary operator. Now the ternary operator is a single statement that lets us represent an if-else condition. Its main advantage is that it lets us do this on a single line of code. So to demonstrate this, let me first show you a simple if-else condition. First we'll say let person equals Lamore, then the if statement will be if person equals a string Lamore, open and close curlies, print hello lady Ada, else and in between curlies here, print hello there. And you can test this out. If person equals Lamore, we get hello, Lady Ada. If person is Prof G, we get hello there. Now this if-else statement has three parts. The if statement evaluates true or false. It's a Boolean. The first set of curlies is what you do if it's true. The second set of curlies is what you do if it's false. Well, the ternary operator here has the same three parts. First, you write a Boolean statement. It must return either true or false. Then there's a question mark followed by what to return if the Boolean statement is true. Then there's a colon followed by what to return if the Boolean statement is false. So in this line, we're creating a constant name result, and it contains the result of the ternary operator, which is inside the parentheses. So between the parentheses, that's the whole ternary operator. First, we check to see if person equals equals Lamore. We don't write if, we just put person equals equals Lamore then the question mark, and if it's true, we return the string, hello, Lady Ada, then the colon, and if it's false, we return the string, hello there. And we wrote these things on two lines here just to make it easier to see the ternary operator statement. Again, the stuff between the parentheses, bool, question mark, do this if it's true, colon, do this if it's false, and whatever we get, whether it's the string after the question mark or the string after the colon, we put that in the result value, and then the line below just prints the result value. But we could absolutely write this all on one line, and that's what we've done here. 
we'll print the result of this, first evaluating if the person equals Lemoore, which is either true or false. And it's the same as this line in the if statement up here, which evaluates true or false. If it's true, we send back what's after the question mark, which is hello, Lady Ada, just like what we've got in the curlies after the if statement. And if it's false, we send back what's after the colon, which is hello there, just like the else clause in this if statement. But with the ternary operator, it's all on one line, and we use one print statement, not two print statements. It looks weird, but if you remember, boolean, which is true or false, question mark, what to return if it's true, colon, what to return if it's false, then you've got it down cold. So let's write this entire five line if statement as a one line print statement that uses the ternary operator. So we'll write our print statement, and in between parentheses is our entire ternary operator. It's got three parts. The first part returns true or false, person equals equals the string Lemoore. Then question mark, this is what we return if it's true. I'm just going to copy the string hello lady Ada up here, paste it after the question mark, then colon, and I'm going to copy the string hello there, paste that after the colon, and we're done. I'm going to comment out these five lines of if-then code, and let's try this out with prof g. We see we get hello there. Let's try this out with person equals Lamore. We get hello, Lady Ada. Perfect. Ternary operator understood. Now, the ternary operator is more difficult to read, and most of the time it's better to write more code if it makes your code easier to read and understand. But since the ternary operator is so commonly used, and we'll especially see this with Swift UI, this is a tougher-to-read function that you should really know cold. And so to make sure you've got the ternary operator down, let's have a ternary operator challenge. Return to your project, comment out the if-else statement inside of your project's button action, and replace the same functionality with one line of code that uses the ternary operator. You can do it. Pause. And it's okay if you need to rewind and take a look at the syntax for the ternary operator. But when you're ready, resume, and let's compare answers. And all right, Swifter, let's head over to Xcode. I'll highlight these five lines of the if statement at command slash to comment them out. And what we want to do here is we want to set the message string equal to one of two conditions. So we're first going to say message string equals, and then we evaluate what to put in the message string by using the ternary operator. So I'll put in parentheses here. And remember, the first thing that we're going to do is put in a Boolean condition that's going to give us either a true or false. That's this bit up here, message string equals equals message one. I'll copy it paste that between the parens. This is going to give me true or false. Then I put in a question mark. And if it's true, I want to return message two, just like I did in the positive if condition up top. Otherwise, colon, I'm going to return message one, just like I did in the else clause up top. That's it. Let's give it a shot. Show message. You are awesome. You are great. You are awesome. You are great. You are awesome. You are great. No surprise. Of course you are because you have mastered the switch case statement and the ternary operator. More big learning unlocked. Keep at it, Swifter. There's more goodness to come.